Hey, what's going on summoners? My name is Crumbs and today I'll be walking you through this week's weekly news update. There's a ton of different things to cover, especially with how much Riot has announced these past few weeks. Whether it's a look at some beautiful new skins, meta changes, crazy events, or whatever it may be, here at Pro Guides, we've got you covered. So be sure to subscribe and stay tuned till the end so you don't miss out on any important updates now and in the future. Now let's hop right in. Starting us off strong, we've got the new skins being added to the PBE. Before we dive into that though, don't forget to pick up the Star Guardian skins that were released last patch. They feature Star Guardian Kai'Sa, Sona, Fiddlesticks, Nyla, Echo, and Echo even got a Prestige skin. Speaking of which, Phase 2 of Star Guardian is upon us. This means we'll get the rest of the skins that were teased. With this patch, you'll be able to purchase Star Guardian Talia, Quinn, Rel, and Akali. Don't worry, we did not forget about Star Nemesis Morgana, who will be hitting the rift as well. Each of these skins feature amazing tweaks to their models, textures, sound effects, visual effects, and they'll get a nice Star Guardian themed recall. Star Guardian Akali, however, is going to cost you 1820 RP. That extra RP will grant you new animations and a new voiceover for her. Each of the new skins will feature multiple chromas and a loading screen border so that you can customize them to your liking. Plus, Riot is giving Jinx a new chroma for her old skin which gives her a nice star nemesis color pattern. This is a mythic chroma which means it comes with new textures and completely recolored visual effects. Alongside their chromas, each of the new star guardians will have their own icons as well as event exclusive icons. If you're not a fan of the Star Guardians but instead want to focus on their familiars, don't you worry, all of the new Star Guardian familiars will have their own icons added to the shop for purchase as well. Finalizing the rest of the Star Guardian content, we could not forget about Star Guardian Syndra Prestige Edition. With Phase 2 of the event, Syndra is the exclusive skin you've all been waiting for. It features a beautiful new splash as well as what seems to be a loading screen border. This skin changes her to a more gold and blue color scheme while also featuring a lot of glitter in her abilities. Overall, Riot continues to make their prestige skins better and better and Syndra is no exception. Moving on to the next few featured PBE skins, we've got some cool additions to the Monster Tamer universe. As of now, the new skins feature Monster Tamer Lulu, Kogma, and Vagar. Each of their splashes seem like they're in stadiums waiting to battle one another. These skins will feature new models, textures, visual effects, sound effects, and are likely to receive chromas as well. While more may be on the way, as of now, these three are the only ones that are confirmed. Finishing up our PBE content, we've got an interesting text teaser that was found in Camille's PBE files. It mentions the term Steel Valkyries and hints at a few additions to the universe that has Bullet Angel Kaisa, Gun Goddess Misfortune, and Admiral Renata Glask. While nothing is technically confirmed as of yet, the files mention Morgana as being a defector similar to Kaisa. There is also talk of Lux and Garen being on the bounty board. As for the bounty hunters themselves, it seems Commander Camille will be on her way to the skin line. If we get more information regarding these skins and their universe, we'll be sure to update you all. Before we continue on to our next big update, we want to remind you all to check us out at ProGuides.com. We offer tons of unique guides like this from some of your favorite professional players. If courses and lessons aren't your thing though, don't you worry. We have challenger level coaches that are available 24-7 to help you out. So what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the Pro Guides family. Nonetheless, let's get back into the video and dive into some massive meta changes that are coming your way. While we don't usually talk about balance changes on our news updates, we felt this one was fairly important. Riot has taken a stance that enchanters, healing, sustain, and shielding are currently far too strong. While a majority of the community agrees with these sentiments, a few don't. Ever since the durability patch update, it has been a coin flip on whether or not someone enjoys the game. Some players feel that enchanters have overtaken the meta due to their high utility with low gold. Others feel that the game is finely balanced and allows all players to deal a significant amount of damage while not instantly one-shotting people. Regardless of your stance, these new PBE changes are looking to shift the state of the meta once more. Riot is changing quite a bit including champions, items, and other systems that feature any type of sustain or shielding. Looking at a few champions, we see some nerfs to Aatrox that will reduce his HP per level, his E having its healing reduced, and his ultimate will have its lifesteal reduced as well. 
Ross, Kane's red form is having his health per level increase, but his healing from damage dealt to champions will be decreased by quite a bit. Wukong is next on the chopping block and his passive is having his health regen per stack reduced, but as a compensation, his ultimate is getting a fairly nice AD ratio buff. Moving on to our enchanters, we've got Yumi, whose heal is having its AP scaling decreased, which will hurt quite a bit. Next is Janna, who got hit pretty hard. Her bonus heal and shielding power is getting cut by 5%. As a compensation, her shielding is getting a very minor buff, and her ultimate is getting a 5% boost to its AP scalings. Let's move on to the various enchanter items that are being nerfed as well. These are all getting their heal and shield power cut down. Forbidden Idol is dropping from 10% to 8%. Arden Sensor is following suit. Mikhail's Blessing is going from 20% to 16. Redemption is following the same pattern. Staff is dropping from 10% to 8. And finally, Moonstone is having its max stacks dropped from 5 to 4. Other items that are being changed are health potions, which are having their healing drop from 150 to 120. The refillable and corrupting counterparts are being lowered from 125 to 100 healing. Finally, the movement speed from magical footwear is being decreased from 10 to 5. Moving on to the systems, we have quite a few rune changes. We're going to rapidly fire these off, so bear with us. Biscuit Delivery is having its HP restore lowered from 10% to 8% and its mana lowered from 50 to 40. Bone Plating is having its cooldown increased by 10 seconds. Conditioning is having its armor and MR lowered by 1 as well as its total lowered from 4% to 3%. Guardian is having its cooldown increased by a massive 20 seconds early game. Scorch is being buffed to deal 5 more damage at all ranks. Second Wind is having its healing lowered from 6 base healing to 3. Sudden Impact is being buffed to give 2 more lethality and 1 more magic penetration. Unflinching is having its tenacity and slow resistance lowered from 10 to 30% to a huge drop of 3 to 25%. Finally, we have Time Warp Tonic getting yet another nerf by having its movement speed lowered from 4% to 2%. Oh, and did we mention that? The teleport is having its cooldown increased from 360 to 420 seconds. Overall, these are a ton of changes to take in, so feel free to take your time to absorb all of the information. On top of these, there are a few more regarding Dragons and Rift Heralds. This is looking to shift the meta to a more early, skirmish-focused style of play thanks to all of the reduced healing and massive nerfs to enchanters. Champions that thrive in small fights and high early damage should be making a nice comeback and with them, maybe a few more happy players. Now before we move on, let's not forget about our favorite Pro Guides tradition. Today we want to ask you all, with the meta shifting yet again, what champion are you excited to see making a comeback? Personally, I can't wait to see Udyr continue to make his rounds in pro play. He's such a silly champion and with all the focus on early game and objectives, he fits right in the mix. But that's my answer and we want to know from you. Regardless, let's get back into the video and dive into a nice breakdown that Riot has left for us. Riot has shared with us a few quick gameplay thoughts. The article itself focuses on what Riot means when they announce that a champion is getting a mid-scope update. First, you have to break down what the term mid-scope update really means. These updates offer substantial updates to champions that include but are not limited to their abilities, animations, visual effects, sound effects, etc. And it's important to note that these kinds of updates do not impact the champion's model, voiceover, or lore like how Caitlyn's visual gameplay update did. Riot states that these updates take multiple patches of planning to truly get them right and it's why they try to be careful with doing them too often. I mean, imagine having to deal with a sudden broken mini rework of a champion and their abilities. As for how champions are selected for the mid-scope update, Riot tends to look for champs that have either become problematic for the game or that just need a bit of polishing. The example they featured was Olaf, who was difficult to balance in pro play. Champions like this that are often OP in pro yet underpowered and unpopular in regular play are a prime example. So Riot took Olaf and solved his issues with a mid-scope update. It makes us wonder if they'll be able to tackle similar champions like Kalista or Azir who consistently wreck havoc on pro play when they're even slightly touched but are not that popular in regular play. Riot also goes over their update goals once they finally decide on a champion. They look to polish up how champions feel, better define their strategic playstyle and overall want to cater to players who love said champion. With these updates, Riot looks to strengthen the champion theme and fantasy that comes with them. They try to be very careful to not reinvent these, but it can be difficult at times without community feedback. Overall, the mid-scope updates are to make both the game and the champion feel better. 
So if one of your favorite champions is selected, be sure to provide your feedback so the changes you want can happen. Finally, Riot is looking to release these types of updates at a steady pace when possible. It has taken years of practice and a ton of feedback, but with this newfound transparency, they're hoping to work on multiple champions throughout the year. Speaking of working on champions, we finally have an update for the Udyr rework. For those of you who are unaware, Udyr has been having his rework done for about a year and a half now. It has been a long journey of them releasing multiple progress notes and pictures. Udyr's full rework is looking to completely reinvent the champion's abilities and gameplay while diving headfirst into his theme as a spirit-wielding shaman. Reeve 3 has confirmed that Udyr will be coming around early to mid-August, so very soon. We will try our best to keep you updated with this information, but let's get some hype going for the fact that we will finally get to see the new and hopefully amazing Udyr. Before we continue on to the end of the video, if you want to join an amazing community of people like you that love lists, talk pieces, and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description. So what are you waiting for? Join us! Nonetheless, let's get back into the video and take a look at our final few points and go through our patch rundown. Before we end the video, let's quickly go through a patch rundown so you can be prepared for your next solo queue game. On top of our previously mentioned healing and shielding changes, there are quite a few buffs and nerfs to take note of. Jarvan is having his Q damage buffed and his E will now offer a scaling cooldown that goes from 12 to 10 seconds. This will have him fit in nicely with the new meta. LeBlanc is getting a few base stat buffs to her mana and mana growth, as well as giving her W a bit more damage. Similar to Jarvan, she will be making a popular appearance thanks to her strong skirmishing ability. Pantheon got a nice buff to his Q, which will now let him take camps faster than ever. Whether or not this will bring back Jungle Pantheon is for you to decide. Moving towards the strongest AD carry in the game, Sivir got a few key nerfs. Her Q is having its cast time reduced to properly scale with attack speed, and her W is dropping its damage to minions from 80% to 65. That being said, her W bounce will now execute minions that are hit if they would have been left at less than 15 HP. Finally, Sunfire is getting a well-deserved nerf by having its base damage changed to a flat 15 damage rather than 12 to 30, but its scaling damage is also being buffed by 0.75 bonus HP. And that concludes our weekly news update. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to join our Pro Guides family over at ProGuides.com where we offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you just won't catch anywhere else. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, good luck on the Rift and may the LP God smile down upon you.